Tradition. You can't buy it. It's earned the hard way over decades and eras. On the field, on the road, in the mud. With guts and with grit, and firm belief that today could be our day. The Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup is back. Our 109th edition, still alive, still kicking, the oldest prize in American soccer. 96 teams, part-timers to major leaguers, survive and move on, lose and you go home. So we call all underdogs, dreamers and believers. And we ask you again, one simple question. Are you up for the cup? Hello and welcome to Madison, Wisconsin for opening round action in the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Forward Madison taking on Duluth FC. James Hadden not here with you. Ross Davenport with me. Now it's time to take a look at our players to watch. And when you think about the Lamar Hunt Open Cup, it's a long-standing history, the longest played soccer tournament in the United States. And Rock, just the chance to play in this is such a big deal. It is a big deal. Listen, some off-season nonsense and noise around this competition, right? We won't talk about that tonight. Getting into it here, it's such an exciting week. Forget about March Madness. This is the real March Madness, James. <laughs> Definitely an opportunity as we move on forward. And we, thinking about the players to watch in Devin Boyce, he is such a big time player for this team. Started, of course, last week, got the lone goal, and that was important for this team. And he's gonna be important potentially in this matchup. Yeah, obviously he took the late, they have to take the late point for that 96 minute time goal by Tormenta. Devin Boyce will come off the bench tonight. Former Omaha Greenville man. He's the kind of guy that can change the game with his energy out off the bench. So we'll see if he, if, if he's needed tonight. We'll see. And on the flip side for Zeke Fultz, he's the goalkeeper for Duluth, and if Duluth is going to have the opportunity to pull the cup set here against this team in forward Madison, he's going to have to be big. Listen, this Madison lineup tonight, very offensive. Mr. Fultz is likely to be a very busy individual tonight, and if he's going to, if this team is going to at least get it to extra time, perhaps he's going to have to step up. Well, here are your lineups for both Duluth and for forward Madison, and who sticks out for you? I like to see, see Jerome Macias in the middle. Did, haven't got a look yet this season. Stephen Payne, watch him flying up that right wing. We'll see if they line up in the 3-4-3, 3-5-1, 3-5-2, We'll see. It's going to be interesting to see what Matt Glazer does to tinker with things here tonight with Madison. And then Duluth, you always have to look out for Tyler Limmer. He played at Northwestern College, scored 54 goals in college. He's the all-time leader in goals at Northwestern. And you have to expect if Duluth is going to find one of those goals that's going to be necessary to win this match, he is going to be in the thick of it, whether it be scoring or assisting. Beautiful night in Madison here, Bree Stevens Field. Crowd filtering in. We've seen some big midweek crowds during forward Madison's history. Not sure how many we'll see there tonight, but listen, great to see the fans out for this U.S. Open Cup first round. And we're off. First round action between forward Madison and Duluth. Duluth in the green and white tops with white shorts. Forward Madison in the blue tops and navy blue shorts. And Ross in a matchup like this, if you're the side with the expectation, of course, to come out victorious in forward Madison, how do you set the tone in a match? Is there anything to keep an eye here on the Madison setup? Looks like it will be in their traditional 3-4-3 almost tonight with Davila pushing up. He came off the bench, the Uruguayan man from Peñarol on the left-hand side. He'll push up along. I think he's going to come out and try and get an early goal, set the tone, James. If you get that early goal, that'll force Duluth to push, and that's when you'll find those openings at the back. Ball hit long. And then taken care of by Colin O'Mahony. His back line for Duluth is going to be tested. A lot of speed, especially with Christian Sanchez racing forward and Nassim Bartman, Cape Town, South African, born 30-year-old. Yeah, 
Justin Duluth. Madison have obviously had one regular season game together on Saturday, had a full preseason. I'm not sure how much this Duluth team has played together. They do have a few college guys that have finished up college and stuck around in the area. So you have some local talent as well. I know they had tryouts a few weeks ago. MPSL season doesn't start until May. So it's, it's a tough, tough thing for these NPSL semi-pro and amateur sides trying to get a team together at times, depending on who you have available locally. Well, listen, I'm sure they'll be super excited tonight just to be out there. They flew in late earlier this afternoon. This ball is through, and immediately Zeke Fultz with a stop. That's his first save of the day. And if that's any inclination of how this match is going to go, he's going to need a lot more. I think that was Agustin de Vila with the chance there. Okay, when you haven't played together a lot, it's the communication, especially between the center backs. De Vila just found a gap there. That was indeed a solid save by our player to watch James Fultz. Zeke Fultz played at Northwestern College himself, was former first team all conference player, was honorable mention last season at Northwestern. Showing off his stuff early. We're in the third minute. Yeah, Davila was through there. He's an interesting character. He played at the highest level in Uruguay. Certainly one of the better leagues behind Argentina and Brazil in South America. Came up through the Peñarol youth system, the five-time Libertadores champions. And she scored for Liverpool at Montevideo in the 2020 Supercopa final win over Peñarol's rival, Nacional. Scored the first goal there in an extra time victory. He's got some talent looking to make his name here in the United States. Keep an eye on him, number 20. Playing more of a central role ahead of Christian Cheney, which is interesting at the moment. This is Jake Verdure, played at Chicago Fire 2 last year. Quickly forward, Prentice. Nowhere to go. Yeah, you mentioned James Federer on a short-term contract. Listen, with the CBA now and the limited funds available. We'll get to that in a second. Prentice just gets to it at the end line. Not enough power to really impact. Nice. Already with his hands on the ball again is Fultz. Yeah, a lot of these League One sides come into the season. They've all, almost all of them played one game. I think they've all played one game now through the first two weeks. Coming into the season with 18 to 20 on a roster back in the previous League One days before the CBA, you'd see rosters in the mid 20s. But now with the minimum salary, you're looking for those cheap guys to fill those those last couple of roster spots, and maybe Fudder Futter is one of those guys. Yeah, last year played on a playoff team with Chicago Fire Two, lost in the quarterfinals to the Red Bulls. See Cicero Macias. Sitting in that double pivot ahead of the front three. I mean the back three, excuse me. It's a pretty lethal midfield combination, those two. You see his 26 starts last season. Cicero 14, 13 off the bench. Prentice. Both of them former USL championship players as well. See more and more players come down from the championship to find more minutes in USL League One. Oh, nice back heel. Macias tries to go back. And up on the pitch was Augustin Davia, but the decision is play on. Yeah, Davila looking for the penalty there. I'm not sure how much the ref saw of it. It was slightly after the pass. Referee should have been looking behind the play and perhaps wasn't. First chance to come forward a bit. Quickly fizzles out. Getting the start today in goal for Ford Madison is Martin Sanchez, native of Minnesota, born in Bloomington. In the second year backing up Burnt Shipman for Madison. Yeah, Burnt Shipman, one of the best goalkeepers in USL League One last season. Sanchez getting the start here. It's always good to get your back up an early look just in case you need him. It was Limmer who made the tackle. Aaron Akinola. Now, wonderful slide tackle by Jake Fadur. Throw in, though, for Duluth. Yeah, 
crunching tackle there. Joe Pickering finding himself on the end of it. There's the loose ball here deep inside Madison territory. Of course, there's always somebody watching you, James. These semi-pro players, we've seen contracts come out of games in the US Open Cup. The teams have been particularly impressed with the performance against them. So you never know what's out there. If you can come in and score a couple of goals, you might find yourself with a, at least a short-term pro contract somewhere. You can be a villain. Turns out to be a heroic day for yourself. Ball pumped long. Shaney will head it forward. Ball controlled by Pickering. Played his college ball at University of North Carolina. And prior to that was at East Tennessee. Eighth minute of action. And now Duluth finally with an opportunity to settle the ball. Quickly lost back to the Flamingos. Bartman battling to win his team a throw in. Let's try to remember the guy's name. Florida Soccer Soldiers, one of the amateur teams a few years ago from Florida. They ended up with a guy signing a League One deal. Let's see if it comes to me later on, James. Long game. Plenty of time. <laughs> yes. I believe in you. Or I'll use my internet talents. This is Pickering. Keed. A lot of open cup action tonight in the first round. We'll have matches today, tomorrow, and Thursday. 109th edition of this great tournament. Felipe Arteaga was offside. Team about Ford Madison last year, of course, was a playoff team in League One. Lost in the first round, but made it into the playoffs. Have Good mix of players from last season that are also now on this season's team, and they're going to be looking to, of course, advance in their league play as well. I remember that guy's name. I looked it up. Valentin Sabelli scored against Charlotte in the 2019 U.S. Open Cup, and then Charlotte ended up signing him. Then went over to Tacoma and spent last year with Northern Colorado. Oh, my! A spectacular ball over the top, and Christian Chaney judging for Madison. Listen, this guy is one of the best strikers, best pure center forwards in USL League One. Showed there exactly what he can do. 11 goals last season. After moving over from Central Valley Fuego, his hometown team. Cheney gets Madison on the board. Led the team in goals last year with 10. And as you mentioned, was an excellent goal scorer with Central Valley Fuego. But what a spectacular ball over the top to play him through. Not an easy technique. Also to tap it over the goalkeeper who had come off a bit. And exactly what Ford Madison was looking for. An early goal before the 10th will inside the 10th minute. Yeah, Cheney's one of those guys that has that rare combination of size and pace. He's been a goal scorer wherever he's gone. Spent time with Charlotte, spent time overseas as well, Sac Republic. He's only 29 years old, still. One years ahead of him. It's a lovely finish by the big man. Keep you abreast of all the other scores, of course, going on. There were some six o'clock starts in the US Open Cup tonight. Miami United early second half with a 1-0 league at Chattanooga FC, the new MLS Next Pro side, formerly Nisa. Bit of an upset there. Miami United the semi-pro side in Vermont. Green with a 1-0 early, 1-0 lead over Lexington. It was not ja Jacob Labovitz, former Greenville triumph striker who, quote, retired, and then with his wife's coaching up there at the University of Vermont. So she went up, he went up there with her and is playing for Vermont Green tonight. 4,500 people slated to be at that match. It's gonna be rocking up there. Absolutely. Now Duluth 
who you mentioned just recently had their tryouts trying to prepare themselves for their league season that starts later this summer. Down 1-0 to USL League One side for Madison. They look pretty composed, James, though, earlier on here. There haven't been too many silly turnovers, of course, as soon as I say that. Ball There's a giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> and now Flamingo's turning. Nothing there, though. As Cheney would have been beat to the ball. It's now 2-0 for Mont Green. First cup set, maybe, James, going on there in that beautiful state. Lexington, all those signings this summer in USL League One spent a ton of money. They may find themselves being dumped out of the Open Cup here in the first round. Now this ball is lost, but the foul on Augustin de Villa. De Villa. A good contingency here. And Bree Stevensfield. This US Open Cup broadcast this year is you can just flip over and go watch another game if you want at any time. Of course, I'd perhaps see some games go to the, the dreaded penalty kicks tonight. We know how much the neutrals love those. I'm not sure how much time I spend during the season just re checking out random penalty kicks, James, and cups around the world. <laughs> to see penalties. As long as you're not involved. That's <laughs> a, if your team is involved, it's never fun. Jake Kroll there, starting every game last season. Didn't play in the opener, though. Good shepherding out there of the ball. 99 League One appearances. So about to hit the ton mark coming up soon. Kroll himself, a former two-time NAI All-American at Spring Harbor. versus Field. This will track down by Michael Chilaka. Now Macias. Drake, Drake Kral was coached at Spring Arbor by Nate Miller, former San Diego Loyal assistant, Lansing Ignite head coach in USL League One now with Real Salt Lake. for a little while with San Diego. Obviously before their demise, unfortunately. Jalaka. He's got an interesting resume, James. You were talking about it before the game. Spent some time in Israel. San Diego Loyal last season. Nice little pickup for Madison. They didn't need to change much last year. Obviously had a disappointing playoff loss to Northern Colorado. That was their first time back in the playoffs since 2019. Added a few real key pieces in this offseason. That has a lot of people thinking Madison could certainly challenge for a League One title. Had that disappointing tie on Saturday. They're allowing that 96th minute equalizer to Tormenta. 10 minutes of added yes. time it just seems like Scratching on a chalkboard of how long it took to kind of close down that match. Oh, oh careful. Oh, come on. Let's not get silly. <laughs> Referee had a great view of the overreaction. He's just going to have a quick chat to both of these two gentlemen. Is he Bartman? Maybe it is. Oops. Didn't catch the number on the Blue Greens player, but referee this evening. Making sure the nonsense doesn't start too early here in the 16th minute. Good decision there. So a free kick for the Flamingos. You mentioned their playoff loss last year to Northern Colorado. But their defense was sound throughout the season. 
Burn Shipman, starting goalkeeper, second in the league in clean sheets. The team that allowed the third least goals overall in League One. So after giving up this early goal, Duluth actually a much larger mountain to climb than it might seem because Ford Madison just doesn't give up very many goals. No, I think the key will be here not to panic, right? Don't start throwing bodies forward here too early. You go down 2-0, this game could get out of hand. Just hang around, pick and choose your spots. To midway through the second half and then perhaps start getting a little offensive. On the flip side, full forward Madison, knowing that they have that early goal and knowing how strong their defense is, might have the opportunity to find another one before half. Really put the pressure on. Ball's given up. Left forward, Fultz will let it roll into his own box and deal with it. Yeah, a little too much pace on that ball from Cheney for Davila there. Coming the other way, tracked down by Arteaga. Chance to possess the ball. This is Pickering. Madison not pressing too hard. And some of these guys played on Sassy Peace and Cross. Ball comes in from Bellamy. Now this ball handled by forward Madison. Prentice. I love how he has his first name on his jersey. If you're going to have a name like Wolfgang, you might as well have your first name on your jersey, James. <laughs> Ritterer, who had so much time to make that assist, ended up being the goal scored. Cheney. He certainly got himself his audition off to a nice start here, has Mr. Footerer. 25 days goes by quickly. That contract will be here and there. Must be here for a little bit longer. Especially when you use that this three center back system, you need extra center backs on the roster just in case for coverage, etc. Timmy Mail as well. He's not on the bench tonight. No Sharif, no Sharif Jay on the bench tonight, which is interesting. No Derek Gebhardt either. Those are the three not in the 18. It's 21 man Madison squad. Shalaka. All the way around to Fadur. Another center back. Sorry, James. Mitch Osmond on the bench as well tonight. Captain for Madison. Princess. Love it. Gets it back. Wolfgang whips it in. Ball will bounce all the way around. Chalaka will track it down for forward Madison. Band in fine form tonight. Glad to see they made it out on a weeknight. No days off. Seems like no seconds off for these first 20 minutes since they've been playing non-stop. Madison will take on Greenville on the road on Saturday. See if Matt Glazer is thinking about that a little later in this game if he needs to rest some legs. That's our first yellow card of the night. It's going to go to Joe Pickering. So a booking for him coming in just before the 21st minute. That was causing some problems up the middle here with his technical ability. He have to fight his way into this starting 11. When League One play resumes is Augustine Davila. So Bartman. Davila stand behind it. will be Davila whipping it in. Man ends up on the pitch. That's Cheney. But again, nothing coming of it, despite what the fans on the in line are seeing. Cheney, not an individual that goes down easily. Big physical presence. Now we see a bit of a press from Madison. 
That's one way out of it. Ball comes over the top. Still in a bit of a jam. Nicely done by Ali Nakid. You mentioned the poise that Duluth is playing with. Really their lone mistake was allowing Fedor that much time to basically drop a perfect ball in from 60 yards out. What a ball it was. Channing just got the other side of the center back. So sometimes when you're playing professionals, you give them a little too much leeway and they'll take advantage of it. You think, oh, I got this guy, and then two steps later, he's passed to you and gone. Also, maybe he said in college, feeling like, oh, I can get there, or even as a forward, not stepping up on Perdur, not expecting him to be able to make that pass over the top. Zakinola, speaking of over the top, tracked down by Josh Bellamy. Bellamy swivels. This ball, nobody home. Semblance of some offense there, though, for Duluth. Certainly one of their more positive trips into the final third. Bellamy just got caught in a little two minds there, whether to shoot it or whether to pass. And in the end, he didn't either. Lexington the pulled one back in Vermont. Fun game there, three goals in the first 20 minutes. On the ball over the top, Cheney with just enough speed. I spoke too soon. <laughs> Linesman was right there. Something going on off screen here. Yeah. Conversation between our head referee. Canola, on the body up, Shalaka. Even Payne will close down that space on the touchline. Forward Madison back in possession. 24th minute, goal scored back in the 10th. Christian Cheney, Fresno, California native. Team in goals last year. Gets a goal in the Open Cup first round. Give his team a one goal lead. Christian Cheney, the only player to play for all three iterations of professional soccer in Fuego. He played for Fresno Fuego, Fresno FC. Well, Fresno Fuego were actually amateur at that time, but Fresno FC and Central Valley Fuego. It's only a hometown here. I'm sure that fans in Fuego are sorry to see him leave. Advantage play. Payne, oh, his pass blocked away. Had two runners coming in to his vision. I think fans had to be happy with their season opener. They got the win. First game under new coach, obviously former U.S. men's national teamer, Jermaine Jones. Stephen Payne off camera is down. He was down behind the play. That referee played the advantage. So he's being tended to right now. So Payne helped up by Shalaka. And play will resume. Let's see if Payne can walk that one off. Really thriving in this wing back system for Madison. Spent time as a true fullback in Richmond. Loves to get forward, Stephen Paint. Spent time in Portugal. And we just got clipped there. Not sure why the whistle didn't blow. He did play advantage. Referee. 3 1 Vermont Green. Goals flying in. <laughs> I'm an expectation for some more goals in this match. Madison has shown the ability to get forward already. And although Duluth has taken in some of that pressure, has not really looked phased. Ball 
drops. Oh, that was lovely. Taken away by Fadur. Just falling was Davila. Forward Madison tried to counter. This is Macias. Working on Akinola. Early a couple of years ago in this you know, Open Cup against Duluth. What a League Two program that's been. Des Moines Men has produced so much professional talent over the years. Obviously, had some cup runs as well of their own. I'm trying to see when we'll see them play. Fun games tomorrow, as you mentioned, James. Including Asheville and Knoxville. That's an old rivalry coming back in the US Open Cup. The USL Championship sides won't enter for two more rounds, and that's not even all of them. Nate will get a further bye. Bartman looking for Cheney. Throw in coming for forward Madison. Something going on with Futterer's equipment, it looks like. <laughs> He's going to get back to the bench. So Futterer will work his way back. Something. The problem. Ready to throw it in is Mauro Cicero. Des Moines Menace will play tomorrow against Capo, California. They don't know a ton about them. Other than they're in the USL League, too. Prentice wins the ball, tries to slip it past Fultz. Absolutely no angle. Well, you see Ali Nikki telling his teammates to leave the referee alone. Wasting your breath. Nice little run by Prentice. Lovely little flick here by Cheney. Prentice just. Made his way between two defenders. Stayed on his feet nice. Almost clipped the post. First corner of the day for either team. Ball sent in. Fultz easily will grab it. Boots it away. Macias heads it for Ford Madison. But it is won by Duluth. Quickly given away. It's a nice turn by Felipe Artiega. Times tonight, still these players have done the hard part and then just giving it away. One high up the field. Now coming the other way. Davila. This is Bartman. Rather than attack. Take their time with this one goal lead. Now Chalaka. Stephen Payne just runs out of gas. That'll roll out for a goal kick. So 32 games in this round. 32 winners will meet each other in the next round with the 16 winners of those then going on to the next round when the championship comes in. 16 of them in that next round, followed by 
eight championship teams as well as the eight competing MLS teams in the round after that. So they'll try to keep things as regional as possible until they can. So that results in some fun local derbies as we go through. And into Miami, Miami FC last season, I remember. So we had the great runs of Northern Colorado as well as Union Omaha last season from League One. Omaha knocking off the Chicago Fire of the MLS. Oops. And that will be on Cheney. The throw in coming for Duluth. It's an acrobatic fall by Colin Mahoney. Looking for some type of free kick. Make it put themselves in a better position with a set piece. Coming the other way is Davila. Prentice has to slow his roll to catch up to that ball. Yeah, I'm sure Matt Glazer will mention to his guys at the break that can't give set pieces away in the final third to a lesser team. It takes his one decent ball. It can end up in the back of the net. Good job of it so far tonight. Have Madison. Prentice pressing forward. Oh, cuts it back. Cheney just bigger and stronger. Check. But can't find that top corner. Listen, I'm all for letting physical players play physically. I think Christian Cheney might have got away with a, an offensive foul. We'll call it there. You'll see it in a second. And he gets the ball, I think it's right before he gets the pass in from Bartman. Christian Cheney just moves his defender right there. <laughs> A little shit hip check. Referee was right there. Let him get away with it. Cheney couldn't hit the target. Just offside of the night, I think. For a player of his caliber, he's going to be unhappy with himself. I think he tried to get a little cheeky, James. Tried to put it top corner instead of just smashing it on target. Now, Prentice might be free again. Wolfgang Prentice. Oops, forgot something. Now clips it in and bolts. Falls on it for Duluth. So, as we are in the 34th minute, it just seems like Ford Madison becoming a little bit more aggressive as they look for that second goal in this first half. Yeah, they'd love to get one before the break. And the more longer and longer Duluth can just hang around and hang around. That's what they're trying to do here. Don't want to allow that second goal anytime soon. Throw some bodies forward late on. Two other games underway. Tormenta hosting America CFL Spurs. Westchester United hosting Maryland Bobcats. Those two are underway. Plenty of options for you to switch over to at the break. Uh oh. It's the first sort of nervous moment for Madison tonight. Ball taken down by Davia. And Fultz will watch this roll out. It's another corner for forward Madison. Couldn't see if the referee was playing advantage. He wasn't in the in the shot. Davila just taking a little too long to pull the trigger there. Got poked away at the last second. Results in another corner for Madison. Bartman, take the corner, ball comes in, headed away initially, second ball with Prentice. Looking Prentice, back to Macias. Savannah Clovers have taken a 1-0 lead at Brave SC, formerly the Villages, you may have seen them play in previous U.S. Open Cups under that moniker called Brave SC and they're losing in the middle of the state of Florida. Aiden Macias. Through three defenders, couldn't get past four. The keyed. The loose. Go by. Just. Far out in front of his teammate. 
Yeah, the final pass just lacking a little bit for Duluth. I think it's just a little off target. Short, heavy. I wonder how much game action this squad has seen over the last few months. Not much of you would have to think. Some early substitutes, perhaps. By manager Sean Morgan. We'll see how this, we get into the second half. Start feeling nice a little leggy. Oh. Nice idea, but Foltz was off his line quickly. Made the right decision because Prentice would have been free. Duluth. FC as an organization. Traces their history back to 2015. Last year, we want a new management. This ball will go over Perdura's head. And Duluth is apparently a curling haven, I learned today. Their team is owned, as you mentioned, James, by Olympic, former Olympic curling gold medalist John Schuster, as well as a local businessman. Alex Giuliani. You mentioned a young team, James. Great to see all these League Two MPSL teams popping up everywhere. I implore you, if you do have a local amateur or semi pro side, to get out there and support them when you can. like this arise, a team like Duluth wanted to take full advantage of it. This ball, oops, squirms free. So Sanchez hasn't had a lot of action today. Ford Madison's happy about that. Macias, Chalaka, a little bit of a press for Duluth. One up the field. Turning is Nikid. Tense moment for just a moment for yeah, Ford a, Madison. There was a half chance there. He had some players inside of him wide open, but chose to take it along himself and lost possession in the end. But certainly one of the best half chances to perhaps create a scoring chance we've seen tonight for Duluth. That manager, Sean Morgan. Also the assistant coach at College of St. Scholastica in Duluth. He actually scored an Open Cup goal back in 2018. 4-4 draw against the Dakota Fusion. It's Duluth's only victory. They ended up winning on penalties. It's only their fourth match in the competition. Obviously, we lost two years of US Open Cup in 2020 and 2021 due to the COVID pandemic. Five minutes till the half. Madison been in complete control of this match for the most part. Lena Kid, a full arm shove of Davila. Davia, excuse me. Restart for Ford Madison. As you mentioned, just being in control of this match, as you would expect. Really haven't faced very many. Tense moments from Duluth. I haven't, but that 1 0 lead is very, only takes very one. tenuous. Fultz certainly hasn't been as pepper as we thought he might, James. He made a couple of decent saves. Didn't do anything about the goal. Adur has the assist on the goal. Turning, ball comes central. Oh, excellent back heel. The ball from Davia, not far enough. Quickly taken back. Think 
kind of shared the game plan for Duluth moving forward in this match. But if you are forward Madison with the one goal lead holding on to it, how do you kind of approach the last five minutes and the remainder of this half? I think the key for them is going to continue to possess the ball as much as you can. Look for the openings like it did for that first goal. They're going to be there. Duluth has, Duluth's defense has certainly stiffened up since that goal went in. Okay, Madison's chances have been limited. This is Bartman. Loses possession to Nikit. And now Bolts. Reverse out on the left flank. A little bit of space. Head comes up. Limmer controls it. Now Pickering plays the cross in. The attack fizzles out for Duluth, but again, it just seems like ever so often make things interesting. Yeah, Limmer just didn't get the luck of the bounce there. It's a little heavier. He could have he's perhaps split the Madison defenders and got a shot away, but not this time. Going down here towards the end of the first half. I think Duluth will be pretty happy with that first half. Sean Morgan, that it certainly haven't looked outclassed by any means by the professional side. Get plenty of firepower on the bench for Madison. With that game coming up against Greenville on Saturday, there may be some changes early in the second half or maybe even at halftime. Mac Blazer has been known to make changes at the break. Mentioned Juan Galindrez. You know, we were talking about him earlier, James. Terror off the bench for Chattanooga a couple of years ago when he was in the USL League one before his brief trip to the championship. Devin Boyce, obviously our player to watch tonight. Jimmy Villalobos, another attacking option. About Galendris. Two double digit goal seasons with Chattanooga. In 21 and 22. Last year played in the championship of Rio Grande Valley. Something brewing here. This is Pickering. Akinola over the top. Oh! I think that was a little closer to his far corner than. Sanchez thought it was. Things seem to be floating in the air forever. Sanchez watched it and luckily watched it go over his bar. Just dropped over the woodwork for the goal kick. Lovely run by Bellamy down this right wing. Just a bit of real space we've seen Duluth get into tonight. Chaney trying to cruise through a couple of defenders and runs into a roadblock. Yeah, time and space there. Tom Akinola, I don't think anybody told him though. He could have turned and gone the other way. Minimum of two minutes of added time in the first half. Madison with the lead of one goal to nothing over Duluth. Christian Chaney, our goal scorer. I think Matt Blazer will have more to say at halftime than Sean Morgan. His team has had this game under their control, but haven't done enough in the final third so far. See what they do in the second half. Try and change that situation as Cheney goes down. Play comes to a halt. Just to check on Cheney. Referee did not signal for the free kick. And he's waving his hand back and forth as if to simply just check on Cheney. So it'll be. The loose ball. <laughs> you can really see the size of Christian Cheney when he stands next to the ref. <laughs> He's an imposing figure. Ball 
Ball lost in the middle of the field. This is Macias. Now, Devia Cheney cannot tiptoe through as he worked his way into the box. And Devia pointing at Prentice, who was off the left shoulder and who was free in full sprint awaiting a pass. Now, this is pain. You can see this is a Madison front unit that hasn't played together a ton. They look a little bit disjointed on different pages at times. That was one of them there. Davila thought about shooting. It changed his mind, then tried to find Cheney, but it was too late. Prentice again comes into the box, pumps it over the top, headed around, and Fultz took a knock as he fell on it. Bartman just caught him accidentally, I think, as he tried to go for this loose ball. More good work from Prentice. Oof, he just left his leg in there. He was obviously very apologetic. Fultz appears to be okay. Great show of sportsmanship. Fultz not taking anything from it. Zeke Fultz. The Northwestern College is mentioned. And that is the halftime whistle. So forward Madison in front, 1-0 on top of Duluth FC. We'll take a break for halftime and be back in just a moment.
Welcome back to Grease Stevens Field in Madison, Wisconsin. For Madison leading 1-0 on top of Duluth in the opening round of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. James Sadden here with you. Roger Airport with me. Now it's time to look at some final scores, and we've already had something brewing, and it's happened. A cup set in the opening match of the Open Cup. A W for Miami United FC over Chattanooga FC, and some other scores that are just raucous. Yeah, that Vermont and Lexington. As you said, James, the first game of the round of the year of the US Open Cup, and we have a cup set, but the rest of those games are all still going on. A couple of upsets there for Mike Green, obviously with a 3-1 lead over Lexington. As we look forward to more matches in this amazing tournament, have more matches moving forward. You see, of course, on the schedule and also now we'll look forward to our halftime highlights in just a moment but you see Red Bulls 2 and we taking on Hudson Valley a New York matchup Chicago Fire and Chicago Sky something to look forward to as well and the Richmond Kickers get going a lot of matchups to look forward to in the first round yeah Asheville City Knoxville is the big one for me that's been a local rivalry going years back See Central Valley Fuego, another team in USL League One. We'll be taking on FC Folsom. Des Moines Menace, we mentioned them in our broadcast. They'll be taking on Copper FC. Yeah, I'll be bringing you that Chicago House, Minnesota United 2 game tomorrow night. Battle of Spokane, that's a big, big local Northwest rivalry as well. Obviously, Spokane, brand new team in League One. Here are halftime highlights early on for Madison. Had Augustin Davia, but Zeke Fultz called upon. This was a beautiful pass from Jake Verdur and a wonderful finish from Christian Chaney, the lone goal of the first half. Yeah, we mentioned Verdur on the short-term contract. That was a 60-yard pull on a plate to Christian Chaney and a composed finish by the veteran. Almost another just tight shot from 
Wolfgang Prentice. And then Christian Cheney just missing on the outside. The lone chance. Akinola fluttering ball just over the woodwork. Here are stats for the first half. Yeah, I'm surprised the possession is as close as it is there, James. But obviously the shots, Madison, I don't think they'll have had 20 shots. But anyway, Madison dominated the first half, I think. But coming out with the 1-0 win, the 1-0 lead here in the second half. They're going to need to find that second goal. Otherwise, some fans might get a little nervous at Bree Stevens. Well, let's get ready for the second half. Forward Madison. Has only played any. one match of the season in the regular season in USL League One. It was a draw to open the year. This is the first match for a lot of these players this year with Duluth. And to have the opportunity to come together and play a match against a League One side, just an exciting opportunity overall. One sub coming on the pitch, Verity Sousa. Enters in. And for Sosa. Yeah, Madison, former champion with Union Omaha. Solid resume. Started the opener at the wing back spot. He'll go right there. That's that right wing's back spot. Replacing Stephen Payne, who did take a knock midway through that first half. Perhaps Matt Glazer just being a little cautious with his attacking right wing back, Payne. I've been talking to Darren Sawatsky during, his, during Stephen Payne's Richmond days, and Sawatsky was always raving about Payne and his potential. So if he manages to live up to it again this season, as a consistent starter for Matt Glazer last year. He loves to I'm up and down that right wing. So does, we'll call him Papo on his jersey. <laughs> Sosa. Didn't get much of a look. And went up to the USL Championship with Sacramento last season. Verity Sosa back here now. Mentioned he started the opener. Probably him and Payne are going to be having a good battle on that right side. Sosa played the last two seasons with Sacramento Republic. Only eight appearances last year. Did have 18 the year prior, but it was tough sledding for that defense at Sacramento. They were so good throughout the year. And so it was hard for him to find time. So he was, Sosa was on the left side on the weekend, excuse me, against Tormenta. Tormenta have a 1-0 lead in the first half in their game tonight. Just the one final so far. The rest of the game is either at halftime or in the first half. So we'll keep you updated as we get down to the end of some of those earlier games. The interesting one so far. We talked about it in the first half. Vermont Green with a 3-1 lead over one of the expected contenders in League One, Lexington. This is a kid. He looks to be down, holding at his lower back. He's shaking his head. Trying to stretch things out. Ali Nakid now up. Some in the morning, James. <laughs> Oof, yeah, he just Everybody. landed awkwardly. It wasn't much contact, but he just sort of got legs taken out from under him. Everybody needs a good morning stretch oh, every yes. now and then. He's going to get a little bit of attention, or some water anyway. That always helps. For Duluth, a number of these players playing locally. University of Wisconsin Superior, also some playing together at Northwestern College. And so that's also another important thing for these teams because a lot of players are playing all over. You're not playing a full uh, season. So just to have some type of connection you know, when you come in a match like this where you haven't played together at all, but you're playing a team that was in the playoffs last year in yeah. their own league at the professional level, they haven't looked too disjointed. No, not at all. It's, it's pretty impressive, James, as you mentioned. 
you just got to find guys that are in town. It's obviously spring break for the colleges. Maybe some of them are on the spring break right now or just finishing up and go up there and play. Obviously can't spend any money as a team, really. Cross comes in. Decent one, too. Had pace and accuracy. Chance now for Madison to break. We haven't seen him have too many chances on the transition tonight. He's done a good job of plugging things up in the midfield. It's almost like when you find that fixture, hey, we're playing Madison. <laughs> can you can you come? Can you come play? Sure, they haven't practiced a ton. Not a bad way to spend your spring break. I mean, open cup match, you mentioned. March Madness. This is the real March Madness. Well, some, some college soccer teams are also playing in this. They do play some friendlies this time of year as well. As long as your college coach says you're okay to play, you can play in the U.S. Open Cup with the semi-pro teams. Bartman booms it out wide. This is Wolfgang Princess working one-on-one -on -one with Pickering. Joe Pickering job down there. <laughs> would not be denied. Loses the ball back, however. Cheney tries to cross. He's back up with him for a moment. And then it's cleared away by Jake Starling. Pickering, defensively, former third team all ACC at University of North Carolina. Good soccer in the ACC. That's some decent pedigree there for sure. Sosa around his defender momentarily. He's at Central, but nobody home. And then on the back end commits the foul. Yeah, Sosa wasn't having any of that nonsense from the youngster. Ford Madison, what type of battle it's going to take for Duluth if they want to find the equalizer. They're going to have to go up against this defense that rarely gives up goals. They did give up the one in their opener, but last season only allowed 40 goals in 34 matches. Although their starting goalkeeper not in net tonight. Martin Sanchez, the backup, hasn't been called upon very often. Hoping to keep it that way. The strong back line, which includes Michael Chalaka. Listen, with a 21 man roster, you can't make a ton of changes. We'll try and keep the core together. We did mention the game on Saturday, again, a tough one against Greenville. Princess. So obviously, see if the score remains the same, that might dictate when Glazer does make those substitutions. See us. Taste out of that mouth from last year, too. They entered in the second round, lost 3 2 at home to Chicago House after extra time. Former Fire Academy man, Harold Smith, scored two goals, the final two goals for Chicago House. They'll be in action tomorrow night against Minnesota United, too. This should be a good matchup. They did have a 3 0 upset win in their first year of existence back in 2019 when they beat El Paso before falling in the third round to St. Louis FC. This is Sosa. Excellent first touch. Ball comes with pace and it's put home. Christian Cheney again. by Sosa down this right side. Long ball again, causing trouble. Just got a little lost there. Did Colin O'Mahony. Sosa looked up, saw Cheney making the run. This wasn't an easy finish, James. On the half volley, managed to keep it low. And nothing Zeke Fultz could do. Here's your Trey Bark. Flip finish, celebration. Cheney with the brace. And the first goal. Back in the 10th minute and has one here in the second half. And for Christian Cheney, has 33 total goals in USL competition. Now two goals tonight in 
the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. We also had a goal go in in Vermont while that was happening, James. 4-1. <laughs> Vermont Green over Lexington. That place must be going absolutely bananas. You mentioned 4,000 or so expected there. What a result that would be. That's what the US Open Cup's all about, folks. Cup sets, we've already had one. That one looks to be another one there. Doesn't look like we're gonna have one here. Plenty of games, as you mentioned, later on tonight and tomorrow as well. Luke, we had mentioned that this was the one thing that they could not do, which was concede an early goal in the second half. And now for forward Madison, a team that's defensively is stout. Now they can pick their chances coming forward, but also keep numbers behind the ball. At some point here, until they're just going to have to open things up a little bit. And in this 4-2-3-1, mostly formation, Since the start, Limmer has been pushing up further forward on that right side. This is a second striker as well. So Bernie Sosa just brought the energy since the break, James. And look, this team's picked up the pace. Took the words right out of my mouth. You, you know, Stephen Payne had the injury. I don't know, like you said, if it was he was taken out to conserve his energy or if it was, nece if it was by necessity. But Sosa has come in and been a charge in this offense. We'll see if Payne is healthy for Saturday. If not, Prentice was very impressive on that left side. If Sosa can play on the right. Wouldn't miss too much offensively. That's the ball now does Sosa, slithering through, tries to pump it forward to Cheney. This ball will come out, fourth row. Sosa on the hop, oh, and Cheney. <laughs> Almost had three. This one was airmailed out. What a different Sosa has made, as I mentioned. Terrorizing the left side of this Duluth team at the moment. Ball's lost high up the field. This is Bartman, been quiet today. Makes this cross, and Bolts calm with Cheney bearing down. And Bartman only played 22 minutes off the bench on Saturday, so should be able to go the distance tonight, you think. Got some 90-minute legs in him. So we're gonna be part of the goal here for Glazers to get some 90-minute action in for some of these guys. Didn't go a full game here, so sorry again. Is going to keep that one in? He is. It is. Still in with Sosa. Now to Villa. Central. Big shot. Out of play from Mauro Sichero. He scored a couple of goals last season for Madison. Originally from Venezuela. Grew up in Oklahoma, though. Homer. Super draft pick. FC Dallas back in 2020, 29th overall pick. Played the Charleston Battery Championship. Bartman. It's going to be an interesting decision, some, some interesting decisions that have to be made by Mac Laser in the middle of the park. He's got so much talent in that central midfield. Villalobos, Murphy, who started on Saturday. Macias and Sichero started tonight. This is Pickering. The first corner of the day for Duluth. At this point, as we're nearing 
an hour gone in this match. Okay, the Flamingo calls. <laughs> From the flock. It was a fun stadium. Was there a few years ago. On a midweek game like this, there was 4,000 there. Not quite that many tonight, but still making tons of noise. Bobai comes in. Oh, Mahoney puts it in the box. Headed on. Oh. oh. <laughs> Joe Pickering. Not a bad look. Trying to draw one back. Certainly the best chance of the night for the visitors. Pickering was wide open. It was a nice ball in by O'Mahoney. Pickering had just put that inside the post. It would be 2-1. Sanchez was well beaten. Got the power on it too, just not the direction. It's a warning shot though for the home team. Absolutely. Mentioned set pieces earlier. A great equalizer in a match of this magnitude. Shalaka, off the field, Sosa. Of course. 2021 with Union Omaha. Rising and heading that down was Pickering. Limmer, around one defender. Keeps possession. Great work by the A. Bodies all over the pitch, and finally, play comes to a halt. See Josh Bellamy working hard. Jake Limmer, excuse me, Tyler Limmer also working down that right side. Underway in Oklahoma, Tulsa Athletic hosting League One contenders, Northern Colorado. Stop by Felipe Arteaga. Or Sosa would have been free with plenty of space to run into and plenty of speed. Paul Bobai will come out. And Felipe Oliveira will come on for Duluth. Bobai was playing. Midfield right behind Akinola. We'll see where Oliveira comes. Let's see if that helps Tyler Limmer get more into the action. We talked about him in the open. 54 goals in college. All time leading goal scorer at Northwestern. College. This is Sosa. Bolts right at the near post. Makes a grab. There, another one of these players from the University of Wisconsin, Superior, obviously Duluth, very close to Wisconsin. A number of players from that team on this squad. The player played for Wisconsin Superior, Josh Bellamy, the former All Conference player and Rookie of the Year while playing there.
17, four and two last year. Program. So the first round of the NCAA tournament. Now with this ball loss, Via to Cheney. Trying to get around one defender. Remains in possession. This has been the difference for Ford Madison and Duluth. The Flamingos have just had all the possession in this match. Sosa has to tap back to him. Archalaka. See the imposing figure of Matt Glazer there by the dugout with his hoodie on. Just thinking about making some substitutions here soon. Keep some fresh legs for Saturday against the Triumph. Perhaps that man, Cheney, get him off the pitch at some point, you'd have to think. If he can get Juan Galindrez a run. Big ball headed on. This is Limmer. Limmer! Ends up on the pitch. Feel like he was pushed from behind. Referee says nothing in it. And in the end, Martin Sanchez will pick this up. Lovely flick with a hint of offside as well. Good defending in by Chalaka. Sanchez did well to come out. Never will have to come off and take his shirt off. And show him some blood. Also not sure if Duluth brought two sets of jerseys. Wait and see. We'd hope perhaps they at least brought one extra one without a number. It's normally what the deal is. Limmer is impressed at times tonight. He's not the biggest of kids. It's a little slight, but he gets his way on the end of balls like that one. He's been able to turn into enough quality scoring chances tonight for the visitors. See Limmer get some treatment of some kind. 10 men for now. Luth down a man for the time being as their striker has his jersey tended to. Lexington have pulled it back to 4-2. Cameron Lancaster, the USL Championship legend, second goal for Lexington, who still have a ton of work to do there in Vermont. Rowan coming. This is Bellamy. To play. Oh, Mahoney. Bolts. Oh, oh, Mahoney from Cork, Ireland. Had some fun on Sunday for St. Patrick's Day. The Irish don't take it quite as seriously as the Americans do, <laughs> as they always remind me. Since I can no law. A number of these players were Duluth. They get ready for another substitute. So so This ball a little too far out front of Sosa. Talked a lot about Ford Madison, a lot of other great teams in League One, whether it's Northern Colorado. 
Colorado. Had such a great year last year. Their best player moving on to the championship. His names. <laughs> what a start for him. Yeah, his names of the team of the week. Duluth on the prowl now. Ball tapped away. And now, not a bad effort. Harrison Tibbets off the bench, James, was it? They made that substitution they were about to, but they missed it. Jersey, or if that has just been a jersey change. It's a good question. I feel like it's just to look like with a different jersey on. This is so sun. You may never know. It certainly looks like it. 100%. Sosa, two hands to his defender, and he'll receive a yellow for that. So although he has an assist on the day on the second goal, now has a booking. Martin holding his hamstring. That's a good sign. Referee signal and for a substitution. Let's see if we can see what happened here to Bartman. I think it was before that. Yeah, you see him go down there, stretching the hammy. Ernie Sosa will have to be careful the rest of the way. And Bartman, that's a concern. You can see he's got some tape on that right leg. Bartman. Okay, two seasons with Ford Madison. 55 appearances up to this point. Five goals. Former draft pick of Vancouver. Just needing to be stretched out a bit. Here in the 71st minute. Two goals to none. Forward Madison on top of Duluth in the opening round of the Open Cup. Be a bit silly to push Bartman at this point. You've got options with Boyce and Villalobos on the bench. Looks like they may be making a change the way he's walking off. Devin Boyce comes out of the shadows. That'll be a straight swap there for Bartman. Boyce can play all over the midfield. And I mean, literally, hits all over the place. Time now. Bartman is not on the field. Playing the man down. Out. Throw in coming for Duluth. Now Boyce will come on. So Nassim Bartman goes out. Devin Boyce, the St. Louis, Missouri native, scored the lone goal of the match. Regular season play for Ford Madison. He's a big pickup for Greenville last offseason before last season and just didn't really live up to expectations offensively under John Harks. Just a goal and two assists. Bit of an injury issue mid-season. Looking to revitalize his career here. Back in the Midwest with Madison. I'm not sure how Omaha fans feel about him <laughs> playing for their local rivals, but we'll see. Boys quickly in possession. Swerves back, but gives it away. Canola had come back and picked up the ball. Almost a mistake made by Devin Boyce. Last thing you want to do with the two goal lead is give away a silly score. With a mistake like that. Luckily it was far enough up the field that it didn't kill it. 
Chalaka. Now Sosa. Opportunity to show off his pace. He's just brought down. <laughs> the referee makes the difference because he's giving it the other way. That was an interesting one. Sosa did kind of go through the back of him. Sosa has to be careful there. Like he was the one that received the contact, but he ends up being the guilty party. Artiaga out, Van den Belde comes in. <laughs> 75th minute, Ward Madison with a healthy two goal lead on top of Luth FC. Van Bell, native of the Netherlands. It's Northwestern College had 12 goals there last season. Cheney has both goals for Ford Madison. I'm surprised to see him still on the pitch. He does have the luxury of using him or Galindrez. Rotate on Saturday, Galindrez get the start, chaining off the bench. Bring it off the bench, just caught a brace the game before then. Right? Played 24 minutes in the opener. will be going to help him along for the hat trick. This is true. Prentice. Much quite a second half walking than he did in the first. Those all kinds of have it down that left side, this near side, in those first 45 minutes. Didn't see as much of the ball here since the break. I don't think he'll mind too much though, as long as his team remains up 2 0. Prentice from Redondo Beach. Three years of age, played in the LA Galaxy Academy. Chaney, nice idea, looking towards the middle of the pitch. It's taken away. Danger zone now for Duluth, needing two goals. We need to find one quickly. We want to really make this interesting. Possession. Now, Ford Madison can move it around. And as mentioned, Duluth has not had a problem when they've been in possession to find gaps and have been dangerous at times, just haven't had enough of the ball to really make things tough on Madison in this match. Collision, ball is lost to Devia. I see him throwing more bodies forward, James. He's still sitting back a little bit too much. This is Christian Cheney. Now Devia looking to go back to Cheney. Ball will go out for a corner. Second round will be on April 2nd and 3rd. For those of you with your calendars open, and 32 winners from this first round. Just trying to keep it relatively local. If they can keep the travel down. I know some teams have traveled in this first round. There wasn't many local options. And Charlotte Independence on Thursday going all the way up to Pennsylvania. Ball comes in. Oh my! Almost an Olympico. <laughs> just about ready. This would have been spectacular, but Fultz. He said it had to be great today if he wanted his team to pull the cup set. 
not sure if it was going in. Falls wanted to make sure, though. I just think inside that far post. Another corner for Madison. Ball comes in again. Cheney gets ahead to it. It's left in the box. Now the ball is with Prentiss. Some potential matchups for Madison in the next round. Perhaps Des Moines Menace. That would certainly be a fun one. This is Macias. Sosa has the assist. So we got Minnesota United to playing tomorrow. Madison did have a relationship with Minnesota United as a sort of feeder club back in the early days. Half forward Madison. Be a tantalizing matchup as well. They can take care of business tomorrow against the Chicago House, which will be no easy feat. I mentioned earlier, Chicago House beat Madison years ago in this tournament. Or Madison looking very good in the 80th minute. They've been in control this entire match. We talked about their leading goal scorer from last year. Christian Chaney played minimally. And the season opener that has thrived tonight with two goals. And the fans that have made the, can we call it midweek Tuesday? Is it, is it oh, midweek? Yeah. That's the, definitely midweek. The midweek matchup. I haven't reached hump day yet, so that's why I <laughs> wondered if we had officially made it's it soccer midweek. terms, yeah. I think there it's Tuesday go. through Thursday, I think. I think Monday still counts as the weekend. Premier League still counts Monday as the weekend anyway. Sosa keeps this in play, but his first touch does him no good. And now a change upcoming. You mentioned Galindrez preparing to come on, as well as John Murphy. So Malaka, excuse me, Chilaka comes off and that's not look like Christian Cheney is going to come off. Via actually comes off. A lot of work tonight, to Via. I feel bad for these, the tiring legs of these Duluth defenders are not going to deal with Galindrez and Cheney up top. It's not fun for anybody, amateur or professional. Lexington have pulled another one back, James, 4-3. The last 10 minutes is going to be there. Lexington have got plenty of firepower, and they're going to throw everything at it to try and tie that game and take it to extra time. And Duluth played a 4-4 game previously in this U.S. Open Cup. Yeah, their lone win, you had mentioned, they had to go all the way. This is Princess. Chalaka. Now Sosa. All the way around the boys. Has a couple numbers in the box. We'll work back to Sosa. And these two were teammates back at Omaha, Sosa and Boyce. Very familiar with each other's games. Yep, we'll kick there though. Went to the cup in 2021 with Union Omaha. Put more numbers forward. The voice still frisky, putting out a lot of energy since coming on as a sub. It's his game. Now an opportunity. This ball. Has to be dealt with by Shalaka. 
messing around with Sanchez coming out. Sanchez was caught in no man's land. Chalaka just putting it out to the side. As you should, take it out of the middle. Clearance by Jake Fedur. So substitute for Duluth. Jaded Morgan is coming on for Nerazzo. Jaden Morgan out of Northern Ireland. He was a national champion at USCAA last year with Bryant and Stratton College. Score. Throwing bodies forward now. Sacrificing a defender. Three at the back. Just searching for something. 85th minute of action. Duluth. To make it interesting down the stretch something and need it in a hurry. Holtz is well off his line just to boot that forward. And Sosa will let it roll out. Sweeper keeper work there by Foltz. I'm out. She was going to our chat. He was right on top of it. Works back. Madison just spreading out Duluth. Very difficult for them to cover all the space. Can't score without the ball. Now Boyce being held up by Akid. That'll earn him a yellow card. Leading a kid going into the book. Second booking for Duluth. Joe Pickering has the first. One thing remaining right now is will Christian Cheney find his third goal. Slight performance for Madison this evening. No injuries, a lot of the pain perhaps, and see that back Bartman also a little tough. Beautiful see if ball. Okay for Saturday. Cutting in. Ball's drop. Hit back in by Holtz. But it's going to go down as a corner. And Wolfgang Prentice is grabbing his left leg. As I mentioned, injury situation. Prentice is. Boyce is walking to take the corner, and Wolfgang Prentice is trying to walk off some tightness in his leg. Waves off our head referee. Central matchups for, for Madison. This team has looked very calm today in complete control. We've also got that Chicago City SC versus Chicago Fire 2 game. And that one could be a potential opponent as well for Madison. Ball's lost. This is Devin Boyce. To Sosa. Another part of the professional game that even these 
younger players for Duluth are seeing right now is also just how to kill the game. It's been very obvious as soon as Ford Madison scored that second goal, what they'd be able to do. But over these past 10 minutes, it's been a very professional showing on how to close down a match and really take the air out of the ball, so to speak, from Duluth. It's an important skill to have to finish off games without creating too much chaos. Northern Colorado with a goal in the late first half. One fans keeping an eye there. You can flip over the second half of that one against Tulsa Athletic. Lexington still trying to find that late equalizer. Rowan coming for Duluth. 90th minute now. It would take a miraculous effort for Duluth at this point. This ball comes through. Substitute in Jaden Morgan. Loses possession to Devin Boyce. This is Christian Chaney over the top. Check that that's Galindris. Both have the blonde hair. Lucky Opara with the goal for Northern Colorado. Just mentioned League One fans out there. Lancaster with a pair. Cano for Lexington. Tormenta. Kodo, Nick Kodo. All one to lead in their game. A minimum of five minutes of added time. Ball comes in. Akinola finds Morgan. But no real estate to work into. That in on the touchline. This girl's happy. <laughs> Her team's winning. Yeah, she should be, you're right. And it's a school night. Good energy with that flag, girl. <laughs> I mean, that scarf, excuse me. There's nothing like being able to be out on a school night. <laughs> yeah, she got a reasonable time. She got her homework done. Oliveira pushing down. Jacob Kroll. Three center backs for Madison have been solid tonight. They've been tested a whole bunch. There's just that one wide open header off the set piece. Really the only scary moment. You expect that defensively. Talking at, talked at length about this back line for Ford Madison, as well as the goalkeeper. Today, Martin Sanchez wasn't tested, even though he has great credentials. Played at Northern Illinois back in 2022. And to come up for a nickname for Glenn Dresden Chain with this blonde hair. I'm not sure we'll see much of them on the field together unless Madison's losing at games, but. Bleach Brothers, something like that. I forget which team it was. Was it, it was Chattanooga a couple of years ago that had about six guys with bleach blonde hair at one point? It did not make things easy for us coming to this. Chalaka's also got the blonde mop. saw with Messi and Neymar when they played on the same team, both having the blonde hair. <laughs> Great fashion statement. This ball out for a corner. Fourth minute of a minimum of five. Late drama potentially brewing. Corner for Duluth. Outswinging ball. Must have been 
out of play before it looked like a good well delivered corner kick to begin with but too good went out of play first and they go kick well, did get up for it as you mentioned be a goal kick and maybe the last action for Duluth he made the plane ride to date They get to enjoy a nice team dinner after this one. And hotel nice day. Head back to Minnesota tomorrow. So nothing to hang their heads about in this performance. Anderson just finished their chances that they had. They didn't have a ton of quality chances. Well, certainly wasn't made to work a ton. Two quality goals by Cheney. Absolutely. Two great services. Dura and Sosa. That's the difference in this one. For Dura's pass over the top for 60 yards. Almost sports center worthy. That'll do it. A win in their opening match of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. Ford Madison to Duluth nil. Here are your highlights for this match. Early on, Ford Madison showcased why they had a huge chance to come out victorious. This was an absolutely stunning pass and a spectacular hit from Christian Chaney. Goal number one for him on the day. And things went on from there for Ford Madison. Yeah, hit the volley finish and we'll get to the half volley finish in a minute. Bartman here with his Chaney with his chance to make it to, he would make it too late in that one. A little too fancy there going top corner. Sosa again. Came in as a substitute, played a great ball, and that's on the hop. Chaney makes it two on the day. He has his brace, and Ford Madison with the W over Duluth. Here are the final stats. Ford Madison, two goals, more possession on the day, and in the end, we're victorious over Duluth. Thank you so much for joining us for this matchup. Forward Madison taking on Duluth here in the midweek. And Forward Madison victorious by a final 2-0 with Ross Davenport. My name is James Hadnot saying so long for now and much more Open Cup action throughout the week.